and welcome back to our channel in this podcast we'll talk about how to switch into devops role so if you are coming from a different it background like software engineering or qa background or any sys admin background or any other background how can you make a switch into this role so in previous part of this video in the first part of this video we have talked about how to make a switch as a fresher in devops role in this video we'll be talking about experience for So today I have Mohit with me and Mohit was a software engineer before he started his career as a software engineer then he made a switch to the devops show So hello Mohit can you please tell us more about yourself how you started your career and how did you make your switch to the devops show Thank you so much Soumya so yeah as you mentioned uh, for the first year as my career I worked as a software developer and then later after that year I moved into a devops role So now I have total six years of experience uh, working as a DevOps engineer and currently working in a product-based company. Nice. So a very common issue that we see in this uh, switch is basically people come from different backgrounds, so they have different uh, experience. For example, if software engineer wants to make this switch, so he is mostly uh, more experienced in the development part of this stuff. Let's say if this admin wants to come into this role, then he has more experience in the system administration and stuff like that. So, how can someone, you know, reutilize their experience and then make this switch so that the pre-existing experience doesn't go in waste? A lot of people have this fear that if they make a switch, then their entire experience will go to waste. Okay, but uh, so I will tell you a trick. that you can use uh, to uh, cope up with this so i think there are two categories of people so first category is who have worked in some of the devops tools uh, in their current role maybe they have uh, written docker files or maybe they have worked a little bit on the ci cd pipelines and the second category are the people who have zero experience with devops okay so what you can do is uh, on youtube there are many tutorials end to end for various devops tools Okay, so first of all, we covered in the roadmap what are the top five things that you need to learn. So, uh, what you have to do is go to YouTube, uh, find end-to-end tutorials. Honestly, do them end-to-end. Okay, and then mention them in your resume. Now, you know that you have not done that in last company, and you have learned it from YouTube. We know that, but the recruiter doesn't know that, or the person taking your interview does not know that. Okay. so as long as you are able to answer those questions you are good to go okay now for this first category uh, people who have experience with some of the devops tool that is even better you can mention those projects as well with clear roles and responsibilities that if you have developed docker files you can mention that and for category 2 as i said uh, you can do complete projects and uh, it will save you a lot of time and you will have a De- devops portfolio ready along with your resume now there is a uh, one more thing so if you are coming from a service based company okay so you must have seen that over there the roles are never like uh, software engineer or software developer they give a very generic role like software consultant technical consultant right things like that so that makes it very easy for you to make this switch because now you can convert that consultant role to anything right because uh, you are not a developer you are not a tester you are a engineer or a consultant right so it's very easy to convert your resume into a different uh, domain like a devops domain okay so if you are from those companies uh, you are like in a very good position to make that switch so you talked about resume right so we can add both the experience so if we had developed some other like uh, internal projects related to devops so we can add those as well Do we also need to add our software? Let Let's say if I am a software engineer, so do I also need to add some experience from the software engineer perspective as well in the resume? If I am trying to, you know, get into the DevOps role, if I am preparing my resume. Yeah, absolutely. So there are some skills in the IT industry which are common across all the roles. Okay, so if you are coming from a developer uh, role, then you must have worked with APIs, right? Like REST APIs, Postman. uh right you must have used uh, maybe uh, sonar cube or some other tools so yeah definitely if you have experience in those tools it's a definitely a plus point so you should always mention those points as well so yeah let's say 
my resume gets selected and now i had to prepare for devops interviews so how what you will suggest how to prepare for devops interviews mm -hmm. yeah so as i said like uh, as we mentioned in the last video as well you learn by doing right so first check out our road map what all things we have uh, told you there to study okay and study them one by one okay so you can study directly from youtube uh, which i recommend right so go watch those videos try to do those end to end projects and then google some of the common interview questions so for example if you are preparing for uh, terraform google those questions and uh, you know learn those questions okay so by following this process uh, you will be like uh, at least 90 to 95% ready uh, for that devops interview yeah and that makes sense so let's say i started preparing for the devops role or let's say i started learning devops right now i have already two three experience uh two three years of experience in other uh, it roles so let's say if i start learning devops from today so what's the real realistic timeline for someone to make a successful transition into the devops role as i experienced for yeah so for learning like all the core concepts of devops or the tools i would say you need somewhere around 3 months if you are like studying every day you are spending a few hours right so i think 3 months of time is more than enough to grasp all the tools okay and then after that to get the job it depends on a lot of scenarios so from person to person so one person might get a job in one week some might get it in 3 months right so uh, that depends but to prepare for the interview i think you need 3 uh, months of time now from where like what are the resources that you would suggest for the preparation like how and from where we can learn devops and prepare for interview so the most important thing here is again the road map okay so when you will come to the devops field okay so you will see there are a lot of tools okay there are ton of tools every day you will like hear about some new tool in the market okay so following a road map is very very important okay and pick those tools one by one okay so if you are planning to learn cloud let's say aws uh go learn aws first uh, preferably from youtube okay uh, try to make some projects okay try to use their services and then move to docker and then move to terraform okay so like this one by one study these topics and learn the interview questions from the uh, google whatever you can get and also from chat gpt as well but okay so the important thing is going uh, at them one by one so that the entire syllabus you can cover within those 2 to 3 months so i think there are two types of people if you are like a self learner okay then i think youtube is best because there are plenty of material on youtube that you can go and learn but i've seen there are few people who want to be taught okay who like to do courses and they like that structured way if you are in that category feel free to you know do any course maybe you can buy from udemy or any other platform that you like or any other teacher that you like okay so that is another way to prepare for the uh, interview for devops now the next thing is uh, is certification important for the devops interviews and what level of certification is required for the experienced folks Yeah, see, certifications uh, definitely add value uh, in your resume. Okay, so there are some certifications which hold a lot of value, like the Kubernetes certification, whether it's CKAD, CKA, CKS. And since Terraform is also in demand, okay, so Terraform certification, Associate zero zero three is also very important to do. Similarly, cloud certification is also important, so you can have an entry level cloud certification. Okay, so see, these are not hundred percent required, right? it uh, but uh, in some companies they do prefer only certified people okay and in companies where it is not mandatory even there like you will be uh, given priority over candidates who are not certified okay so it's definitely you should go for certifications uh, i would say cloud certification kubernetes and terraform these three are should be more than enough uh, as of now yeah so professional level of certification is not required that's what your point is right yeah like expert level professional level those are optional if you want to do but at least have the foundation level uh, certifications done yes that makes us yep now moving forward uh, a very common question that you will see uh, is like is programming important for experienced folks so 
let's say if someone wants to make this switch if he is coming from software engineering background then that is okay you must have knowledge of programming but if he is coming from any other background where programming is not used that much so in that case do you think programming is really important and if it is then how much programming you should know to make a switch okay so in devops role you will not be writing code as such like you write in as a dev developer right so you're not writing front end or back end apis but what you will be doing is writing scripts okay for example python scripts bash scripts or powershell scripts okay so those scripts will be used to do some ad hoc tasks maybe you want to download a file from one server and put it in another server maybe you want to set up a cron job okay so yes if you have prior coding experience that will help a lot but if you don't have that then i would suggest uh, take a course around uh, python like uh, learn the basics of python and maybe a little bit of bash okay but uh, do not you know uh, if you have the basics ready like you know basic programming concepts like variables functions oops concepts right that should be enough because uh, these days anyway most of the codes and scripts are generated through ai right even me i don't write scripts manually right i generate it from ai and then i test it i debug it and make it work okay so this this is how like most people are writing scripts so i would say like basic understanding should be there of how the script is working but you do not have to be expert in that uh, as of today because ai is there for you yeah yeah and that makes sense So the next question is basically if uh like for programming level of college right is dsa required in this domain so if yes like what level of dsa is required and if no then that is okay okay so for both coding and dsa uh i think it depends from company to company what are their process okay so many companies ha still have these coding rounds even for devops and this dsa rounds and some do not okay so it will depend on the company but if you talk specifically about dsa then most of the companies they do not ask very hard level questions okay so if you have done like easy level dsa on maybe lead code or hacker rank and some popular questions which are in the medium category i think we should be good to go you do not have to you know do a uh, competitive level uh, uh, problems uh, to crack that job yes i think that makes sense so moving forward what do you think is different from a fresh and making the switch and an experienced folk making this switch uh yeah so the difference is that like freshers uh, i think it's a bit easier because they are like a clean slate okay they do not have any major experience maybe they have internships but uh, to directly land into a devops role like that that is much easier because once you have experience like let's say you have 3 years of experience and 5 years of experience and then you make that switch then a lot of insecurities come in your way like what if my previous experience get wasted how will i adapt to the new role and the new company like right? all these questions come into play okay but if you follow all these things all these tips that we have talked about then i i think you will be able to make that switch i have personally made that switch and i've seen other people make that switch so it is totally possible but yes it will be slightly difficult for a experienced person yes and at the same time they could have a little bit of advantage for example if you are a qa engineer then you already know how to write automation scripts if you are coming from a software engineering by background and you already had some knowledge about software how do software works you have understanding of coding if you are coming from any other background like sys admin so you have already knowledge about systems how system works on networking work for example if you are a networking admin so you have knowledge of network network the devops is kind of you know mix of all these roles so you have a little bit of advantage if you are coming from any other background so that is one advantage as well but at the same time the fear of you know losing the experience that you already have is with this switch right but you have already answered all those important stuff like how we can use our previous experience to make that switch and this is a very like uh, these are some very good points right so oh. one more question to you mohit like uh when you look back right what were a few things you wish that you had known when you first started your journey in the devops field so the number one thing that you will face when you enter into a devops role 
is like there are a lot of tools uh, in DevOps. Okay, so you might end up in a project where you're working with a completely new tool. Okay, so the idea is to not get overwhelmed with those tools. Okay, take them one by one. Okay, so let's say you are stuck in an issue. Okay, so in that case also, uh, first uh, like isolate all the pieces, right? Let's say the CI/CD, Terraform, Kubernetes. Okay, so you have to isolate them and check that issue like it in like all those places. Okay, like without getting lost. Okay, so that uh, clarity of mind you will develop over time. But yes, expect a lot of tools uh, to be used. But at the same time, you know, try to develop that uh, debugging skills so that you do not face uh, issues. Yes, and that's a very good point, Bo. If you have started learning DevOps, you first need to understand the whole infinite DevOps life cycle and pick one two from each phase. Try to understand what problem each phase is trying to solve and then pick one two. Try to learn that. So I think that was all for this podcast. Thank you all. If you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any question, you can ask us in the comment section. We'll try to answer as much as possible. And we have also added our LinkedIn links in the description section. And if you want, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn and you can ask your questions there as well. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.